Get ready for an exciting journey as we embark on a multi-episode series where we delve into the world of metal mixing, and we'll be able to take a mix that sounds like this, and turn it into this. Welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to Mixing Metal with Free Plugins. In episode 1, we covered the most essential part of mixing metal, EQ. The links down below have all the free plugins we are using for this tutorial and stems for you to follow along if you would like. Today we're cranking up the intensity as we explore the powerful world of compression. Now, let's peel back the layers of compression. It's not just about control, it's about sculpting the dynamics to make your metal mix truly powerful. In the simplest terms, it is making the quiet parts louder and the louder parts quieter. Essential for any metal mix is controlling dynamics to make the mix loud and punchy. Now let's break down the key parameters of compression that will fully unlock your metal mix. First we have threshold. The threshold in compression determines the level at which the compressor starts to work. Any signal that surpasses the threshold will be subjected to compression. For example, if you set the threshold at negative 20 dB, the compressor will only kick in when the signal exceeds that level. Next up we have ratio. The ratio is a crucial parameter that dictates how much the compressor will reduce the level of the signal once it crosses the threshold. It's expressed as a ratio, such as 2 to 1, 4 to 1, or 8 to 1. A ratio of 2 to 1 means that for every 2 dB the input signal exceeds the threshold, the output signal will only increase by 1 dB. In contrast, a ratio of 4 to 1 signifies that for every 4 dB over the threshold, the output will only increase by 1 dB. Higher ratios result in more aggressive compression. Next up, we have attack. The attack setting controls how quickly the compressor responds once the input signal surpasses the threshold. A fast attack time, such as one millisecond, means the compressor engages almost instantly. A slower attack, say 30 milliseconds, allows initial transients to pass through before compression kicks in. Choosing the right attack time is essential for shaping the character of the sound. Fast attacks are suitable for controlling transient heavy instruments like drums, while slower attacks can preserve the initial punch of the sound. Next up we have the release control. Release determines how quickly the compressor stops compressing once the input signal falls below the threshold. A shorter release time, like 50 milliseconds, means the compressor releases quickly allowing it to react to dynamic changes rapidly. A longer release time, for instance 500 milliseconds, results in a more gradual release, smoothing out the compression over a more extended period. Setting an appropriate release time is crucial for maintaining a natural feel in your mix. Understanding these parameters are crucial for effective compression. It's a delicate balance, and experimentation is key in achieving the desired outcome in your mix. Now that we covered the basics, let's explore some advanced compression techniques. First up, we have parallel compression, highly common on metal drums. This technique involves blending a heavily compressed signal with the original to add sustain and thickness without sacrificing dynamics. And then finally, we have multi-band compression. Perfect for tackling specific frequency ranges and allows you to compress different frequency bands independently, addressing issues in a more surgical manner. Think of the first episode where I showed multi-band compression on the guitar bus to tame the palm mutes. These advanced techniques give you more control and creativity in shaping your metal mix. Don't be afraid to experiment and find what works best for your sound. If you haven't already, there's links in the description to all the free plugins we're going to use and the stems if you would like to follow along. If this information has been helpful so far, please consider subscribing, liking, it really helps out the channel. Now armed with this knowledge, let's get to the DAW and get hands on with compression. So here we are back in the DAW and I'm going to play a quick clip of verse 2 so it's different from the first episode. All right, so that was a quick clip. You get the idea, and I will show you section by section where I actually have compression, what the compression is doing, and how it applies. So we'll start out with the drums. I will solo the drums. You can hear them. Sound good, they sound punchy. Like I said in the first episode, these drums are pre-processed MIDI drums, so you don't wanna do a bunch of extra compression because they're pretty compressed already. 
so you don't want to go crazy and over bake them and get an over compressed sound so i actually don't have any compression on the kick or the snare but i do on the brass so let's play it if i solo the brass i have this leveling on it what this is doing is smashing the snare you can see every time the snare hits what this is also doing is evening out all the hits on the actual brass itself so every cymbal hit and everything it's bringing it up and level making it even with every other hit and it's bringing the snare down that's giving us a nice even sound on these overheads so moving on we'll move on to the actual drum bus itself so here on the drum bus we have this leveling tool which is in the links in the description below kind of models an LA-2A with some added features and I'm using this for what we talked about in the beginning parallel compression so if I play this you can see my mix knob is only on 28.7% if I cranked it all the way up see it's a very it's a very over compressed sound but if we mix it in it's about 28 thickens up the sound gives us some nice sustain on everything and uh, I'm really compressing it so my ratio is 20 to 1 and my attack is almost instant at 5.5 milliseconds with a release at 206 so it's giving us some more sustain but it's smacking that attack down immediately and then you just mix that in the taste you don't want this sound but a little bit of that works and then that is going into our bus compressor this is uh, modeled after an SSL bus compressor and this is set up completely different so my attack time is 10 milliseconds and I have the auto release set the ratio is only 2 to 1 here because we don't want to we don't want to smash our drums, we're just trying to glue them together. You can see if I if I pull the threshold way down, it gets that real pumpy, um, it's not a good sound. It doesn't sound natural. What we're doing is going for a natural sound. We want it to just kind of hit when the snare, when the snare is hitting. We just want a little bit of compression to kind of bring everything together like we said in the beginning it is making the quiet parts louder and the louder parts quiet so it's gluing it all together that's it for the drums as far as compression goes now we can move over here to the bass and there's a form of compression on here but it's closer to limiting so this is my alternative to Waves L1 that I like. It's called Laumax by uh, Thomas Munt. And it's an infinity to one threshold. So anything that passes the threshold gets pushed down. And we want that with bass because we want our bass nice and even. So we can link these. You see now that the bass is kind of out of control and all over the place. We link these and we bring these down. You can see I'm getting about negative four, negative four dB. But you can see here that I'm evening out my bass sound. And that's what we want on bass. You don't really want to, I mean, you can compress it if you want, but I like to just kind of limit the bass and keep it nice and even. So when we fit it with our guitars. I take this off keeps going in and out it's getting lost turn this back on now we have that nice even bass sound that we want throughout a metal mix so that's it for bass guitar wise I don't use compression. So the guitars are already heavily compressed once you put an amp on them. That's 
Uh, essentially, what an amp is doing is compressing and distorting the sound, uh, introducing gain and harmonics, and that is limiting the transient information. If you look at our DIs, you can see that that's pretty, pretty dynamic, especially if we, you can see that's pretty dynamic. Now, if I render this, so now you can see visually, this is what we put into the amp. And if we render it down, this is what comes out. So what I said in the beginning, we make the quiet parts loud and a lot of parts quiet. That is what an amp does. You can see this looks like a fat little sausage and it took all the dynamics out of this. There's no point in compressing anymore. It's compressed, heavily compressed. So that's a good visual representation, compression of what it actually does to a signal. Now I do have compression on the full instrumental. I'm running uh, the drums and the guitars and the bass and everything except the vocals through this compressor. What this compressor ultimately does is glue all that together. You saw in the previous, we were gluing our drums together. Now we're gonna glue our whole mix together. Turn this on. I don't wanna go more than two or three dB. See if I go too much. We really lose life in the mix. It's too much. I like to keep it around this mark. That's even a little too much. And I have this attack on point three, and I have the release on point one. So it's a quick release. And I have the ratio as low as it'll go at 1.5. We're not trying to do a whole bunch of compression. We're just trying to even it out a little bit more. The thing with compression, you don't want to do it all with one compressor because you're going to get an overbaked, overcompressed signal. We're doing it in stages. And these tiers and these stages is what keeps the, the mix sounding natural and cohesive and glued together. So now moving on to our actual master bus, we have more compression because metal mixes need compression. So now here on our master bus, we have another SSL style compressor. And this one is barely kissing it. I have my attack. I have a slow attack because we don't want to kill any transient information. My release on auto. We're just trying to glue all these elements together with the vocals. And I have the ratio set to two. All these compressors stacked up in little stages doing minute little things in the end gives us a nice natural sounding mix that is also not overly dynamic or out of control, but still allows for some dynamics because you don't want just a, a fat sausage when you're done with no dynamics. That's a, that's a boring mix. It's a boring song. You want to have some natural dynamics in there, but you also want to keep them all under control. And that is the point of compression. So I also have some limiters on here, and this is just to give us some volume. If I play, I shut that off lose a lot of volume it's not doing much uh, gain reduction but it is uh, it is keeping our levels nice and then that goes into another compressor that's just bringing us up to our final our final luffs it's just bringing us up to our final luffs which, uh, for this mix, I have a negative 12, which is fine for streaming services or anything like that. So that's it for compression on this mix. Stay tuned for the next episode where we unravel the mysteries of saturation. In the meantime, keep refining your skills, mess around with this mix. If you haven't yet, there's links in the description for the stems and all the free plugins. If you haven't seen episode one, I will put it up here. And then once episode three is out, I will put it over here. That's a wrap for a compression journey today. I hope this was helpful. Please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, all that good jazz. See you on the next one.